Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We're excited to hear about Shorten Your Quote to Cash Cycle with ExperLogic CPQ and we have uh, from ExperLogic Brian McMurray and he will be doing the presentation today. And we just ask that if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to type them into the questions box and we'll go ahead and get those called out and answered for you at the end of the webinar. And yes, we do record all of our webinars, so this will be available on our website later this week for you to review again, or if you'd like to share it with anyone who may be interested. So now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Brian, and he'll get started with our presentation. Thanks, Angie. Uh, appreciate that, and appreciate the opportunity to present our solution to your customers today. Um, like Angie said, we're going to talk about how you can shorten your quote to cash cycle with ExperLogic CPQ. Um, there's probably a lot of buzzwords in that title, and so um, we will be certain to explain that and, and hopefully uh, uh, relate it to your business today. Just as an agenda, um, we'll start out with kind of a company overview, talk about how our product um, is positioned in the market, some of the customers that are using our solution, um, and then we'll go into a demo and show you an example of what I call an end-to-end -end demo where we start out in, um, in a dealer scenario um, through a portal um, and then all the way through the process to production um, of a finished item. So uh, we'll do that so that you can see our product in action. Um, quick introduction of myself. Like Angie said, I'm Brian McMurray. I work for Expert Logics. I am the sales director for their central region. So I cover kind of the middle of the U.S., um, including um, out to Michigan and Indiana region as well. And so um, look forward to working with any of you that uh, express interest in our product as follow-up. So with that, let me kind of go through, um, starting out with a little company overview. Uh, you may or may not have ever heard of ExperLogic, so I want to just uh, give you a quick um, background on who we are. We've been in business since 2002. Um, we are a certified for Microsoft Dynamics ISV. Um, in the Microsoft world, the ISV um, acronym stands for Independent Software Vendor. And um, it's, it's uh, designated for companies that provide um, what we call add-on products to the Microsoft Dynamics series of, uh, of solutions. And so we fill in gaps, we add additional functionality um, that certain customers might need. Um, as part of their deployment, and you'll see how that fits into the overall solution today. Um, we provide a CPQ solution, which stands for Configure Price Quote, um, and today we've got over 250 Dynamics customers. Just a little history of, whoops, fans too much there, a little history of our company then um, over those years. So we started out in 2002. Um, in 2005, we launched our first product for Dynamics, which was in their CRM suite of products. We added um, then over time their other Dynamics uh, ERP applications, um, including the NAV application in 2010. And so we've been working uh, with that product for, for quite some time and have uh, a large number of customers using that today. Um, oftentimes, customers use both the CRM and NAV, and we'll kind of look at how that might work. In, uh, in a solution. Um, we have been awarded um, think, you know, many awards from Microsoft, I guess I'll say. One was the ISV Partner of the Year. So of all the ISVs that add functionality to the Dynamics suite of products, we were awarded their top um, recognition um, two years ago. So uh, main point here is we've been in business a long time. We've worked with the products that you're working with for a long time. And we um, have a very tight relationship with Microsoft, which gives you assurance that um, we're going to always support the integration. Uh, we will support new versions of their product as it comes out. And so you can be confident that when you invest in our solution, that it will be a long-term uh, relationship and that we will work going forward with you on whatever back-end solution you might use from the Microsoft family. So we use the quote to cash term uh, in the title, and I've used the CPQ term. So let's let's dig into that a little bit more right now. Um, 
in a normal process for companies, and yours may or may not follow this, but uh, a lot of companies start from a sales side. Um, when they sell products, you sell, start with an opportunity, maybe in a CRM system, uh, maybe just managed by your sales team in, in other fashions, and then you move into a quote process, um, convert that quote to an order, and eventually uh, potentially manufacture a product through uh, bill of materials and routings. Uh, we fill in the, the gap in the quote to order process where com for companies that need the ability to configure a product out of unique items and options and be able to price that accurately um, and then produce a nice proposal, a nice quote to deliver to the customer. Um, and this process can span a CRM and an ERP system. Um, we have integration points at each of these levels. So whether you're quoting at the opportunity level, um, at the quote level, at the order level, and whether or not you're creating bill of materials for actual production, um, we have integration um, to our product to all of those different points in a sales quote to order um, continuum. So we call it a quote to cash process where you're starting out in a quote, you're actually then uh, the invoicing, receiving cash against that. And then we add the manufacturing piece to it for those that, that have the requirements uh, to manufacture items. So for some of us, we think, hey, quoting can't be that complicated. You just you know, list the products with their price and you've got an end, um, an end quote for that that you can deliver, deliver to the customer. But for many customers uh, and many products that you might sell, Pricing can become, become very complicated based on many different variables. Um, it's not always the sum of the pieces and their prices. Um, it can be uh, based on formulas and different calculations to make up pricing. Um, another complication is that for complex products, there tends to be tribal knowledge within the organization. So there's only a few people, maybe it's in the engineering department, in the pre-sales department, uh, but oftentimes there's uh, a very few number of people that actually know uh, what products and what pieces will work together in a product. So you're always going back um, and getting assistance on the quoting process um, rather than being able to, to do that yourself as a salesperson. Um, oftentimes there's option compatibility issues in quoting. So certain uh, pieces don't work with others, certain options aren't compatible with, with end products and you end up quoting products that you can't actually manufacture, which turns into issues of rework and um, refunds and such that really delay and complicate um, a relationship with a customer. Um, oftentimes there's need to access ERP information. So if I've got multiple options that I might be able to select from, in a quoting process, um, it's helpful to know which of those options are, um, are on hand so I don't have to back order um, certain products um, and be able to just view different information that you might have in your ERP system that, that relates to your quoting process. And then from a salesperson perspective, uh, not that this ever happens, but now and then uh, salespeople might uh, discount um, their quotes to be able to win business faster and um, in doing that outside a CPQ solution can often lead to, to rogue discounting where you, you know, management and those that might want responsibility for approving those discounts do not have visibility and are not able to, to manage that from a, from a management perspective. So those are some items that our customers find as complications in typical quoting processes and our product is, is, is meant to address those in many different ways. Um, typical quoting tools, um, we see a variety out there of, of ways that people are trying to develop quotes just from a paper system, uh, maybe generated through a spreadsheet type application. Um, on a napkin, I was recently with a customer uh, in, in Nebraska that I really did talk about, you know, most of our products are just drawn up and quoted on a napkin at lunch meetings. And then we've got to figure out how to manufacture it, how to, how to create a quote for that. Um, so very, uh, very tough from a systematic perspective. 
Um, another is just through catalogs uh, where you know all the different options are laid out and yet the the salesperson then has to figure out how to how to turn a catalog item into a custom product for a for a given customer and then just old systems that that might not have a lot of flexibility a lot of capability um, within them and here kind of is a you know Gilbert uh, cartoon that, that always relates to, to sales um, where this tribal knowledge concept comes into play where really you know many companies the only way they can create a quote is is talking to the person that really understands uh, their products and configurations and have that person participate in that and that you know allow that critical knowledge to be accessed directly through the sales channel so what are some issues that that companies run into um, you know we try to deliver quotes faster to customers so rather than hours days and weeks uh, waiting on that quote to come back from from engineering from the person with the, the knowledge of how to quote items uh, we try and make that much faster for you um, accuracy of quotes is a big issue um, so is the quote reflective of what they requested does it reflect what was on that napkin does it make sense can we actually make it uh, big issue with a lot of companies and then where's the integration so if that quote isn't in your main CRM or ERP system there's no visibility of it uh, within a forecast within the, uh, the ability to see what discounts are out there um, so integration being another key issue that we're trying to solve with our solution so putting in a CPQ system, configure price quote, two customers should bring the time to, to quote and to deliver quotes to customers from days and hours to minutes and seconds. And we have customer after customer that um, can say that this has happened within their organization. Uh, the ability to, to deliver a perfect profitable quote every time um, is done through a set of rules and formulas that allows uh, that make sure that the quote is accurate and that it can be made and then the other big benefit for customers um, is to be actual actually be able to turn that quote into um, a production order that includes a bill of materials and routings so that the product can be made without having to re-enter that and all of the uh, delays and potential errors that could occur in that process Admittedly, not every customer, every company needs a CPQ solution. A lot of companies just sell um, single SKU items, but for those with complexity, um, our solution is very key to their success. So here's some industries that typically need CPQ, um, all the way from apparel to furniture and buildings, and you can see all of the ones in between. Um, hopefully uh, your business falls within one of these categories. If you're thinking about CPQ, but, uh, uh, but you know, even beyond this, and we've got a lot of customers in a variety of industries uh, that you wouldn't always expect uh, that would need a configuration solution. Um, some of our customers, and hopefully many of these are recognizable names to you, uh, that are using our solution in, again, broken out into a number of industries. So industries like manufacturing, obviously, um, are good fits for us. Um, heavy equipment. Um, we've got a lot of RV manufacturers in here. We've got a truck manufacturer, um, Caterpillar uh, type uh, forklift type manufacturers in here. And so you see that uh, that those with a lot of parts, a lot of complexity to the quoting are, are great fits for us in this solution. I'll talk about a few of our customers just so you get an idea of different applications and use cases that exist out there. So probably our largest customer right now is Packard. Um, it's a large holding company for a number of different truck brands, uh, Peterbilt and Kenworth, probably the ones that, uh, that you would recognize out there. Um, they're uh, in final process of deploying our solution. It's been a big project with them. Uh, but they have been very successful and are going live 
with uh, over 3,000 salespeople across North and South America um, in this year. And like I said, they're, they're real close and some of those areas are live with our solution. Um, they started out looking at all the different CPQ vendors in the marketplace, um, evaluated CPQ as their highest priority for a system selection. And then uh, after they selected us as the CPQ that fit their needs the best, uh, they, they also implemented Dynamics CRM as part of their deployment. Uh, but they do some very complex, as you can imagine, there's a lot of parts within a truck and um, a lot of visualizations that they've added to the solution so that um, the salespeople can see the truck visually as it's being built out. And I'll show you some of this in the demo that I'll show you is actually of a truck manufacturer and was taken off uh, representative of that deployment. Um, another longtime customer, customer of ours is Malibu Boats. Um, I'm based in Minneapolis in Minnesota. We are known for our lakes and we probably are uh, the biggest consumer of Malibu wakeboard boats as well. Um, they are the top manufacturer of those and they pride themselves in the fact that every boat they produce is custom to the, uh, to the customer's uh, desires. And so no two boats are alike. Um, and so they allow their customers to, to configure it to everything that they want in a boat. Um, there's also a lot of rules that they have to build into uh, the selection. So certain seat scenarios might only work on certain uh, boats, uh, certain wakeboard racks and certain speaker and stereo systems will only work with uh, certain compatibilities that they've built in to the rules engine. Um, they do use this out in their dealers. So the dealers work with the, through the portal to be able to configure a boat alongside the customer. Um, and they've got options where they can hide cost and pricing information from the customer if they're both looking on the screen at the same time. And then they pass that on through to Dynamics and uh, create bill of materials that actually then they can use to produce the boat and deliver it to the customer. Another large customer um, based in Indiana, where uh, you guys, uh, attendees here might reside, um, Allegiant, they do different lock and security systems uh, globally. They've got a lot of different brands. Uh, some of these are, are likely uh, recognizable to you, Slage Locks for sure. Um, but they wanted a CPQ solution that they can, uh, could use for all these divisions and use it globally. Um, across their different uh, businesses. Uh, in the end, they've been able to process almost a million orders um, a year. They, because of the complexity of their different solutions, uh, they, they've got lots of different configuration options. And so uh, tens of millions of unique configurations um, across 29 different product lines and they use uh, globally across three of their different divisions. Um, a big requirement here was the global aspect, so different languages, different currencies, and they've been able to accomplish that with our solution and the Dynamics products. Um, outside the kind of man, more traditional manufacturing industry, I wanted to show one other um, customer help systems. They provide uh, software, hardware IT solutions to customers. Uh, they've built their business over time um, through a lot of acquisitions. And so one of the challenges they had going into this is they had a lot of different uh, businesses and business systems with all with you know various processes and various backend solutions. And so with our solution and dynamics, they were able to consolidate those businesses into one um, single CPQ instance. So um, regardless of what product they're quoting, they were all uh, you know all the sales reps are using one system, one CPQ system for that. Um, lots of rules for accuracy of different pricing um, over, again, a large number of possible configurations. And they've reduced um, time to, to develop quotes from hours to minutes. And so this is a, a great testament to the, to the use of our product and how it does create efficiencies. Um, one of the big areas of, of improved efficiency there is in their renewal process for annual maintenance agreements they have with their customers. And really out of that uh, efficiency of that process, they've been able to reduce uh, three full-time employee 
positions for uh, through the automation of that renewal process across their business. So with that, let's jump into a demo of our solution. We want to show you um, what we can can do from a product perspective. Let me close out this window, jump into my demo image. Um, what I'm going to show you today is, like I said earlier, an end-to-end -end demo um, where we start out in uh, the Microsoft Dynamics uh, portal application. Um, we, we'll then see that quote move to a CRM system and then to an ERP system. Uh, the back ends on this may or may not relate to you, um, but what I want to emphasize is that the configuration engine is the same whether you are integrating to a portal, to a CRM, um, or to the various ERP applications from Dynamics. So uh, whether that's their finance and operations application, which I'll actually have here, or the NAV application, which I know a lot of you might be using. Um, same product, same integration. Um, I'm just showing an end-to-end -end so that you can see how it moves through the entire process. So let's start with the portal. I'm logged in as a portal dealer. So imagine like Malibu Boats as the example. Um, I'm a customer going in to buy a boat and I'm sitting with the, the dealer and they wanna generate a quote for me. Today I'm gonna to be generating a quote for trucks, but same scenario um, that might occur there. So as the dealer, I can go into the quotes area of the application. May take a second to come up. I had it all cached up, but I, it's been uh, as I went through the other presentation. I probably will have to wake this back up as it starts out. There we go. So let's create a new quote. And in this scenario, I'm, in this section, I'm just using the standard functionality within Dynamics. So I'm going to name this quote. And we'll do it so we can it'll stand out there for us. Let's select a potential customer. And in this case, I'm selling it to Forest Wholesales. So I'll select that. Um, I do have to select a price list. You know, you might have this default in. And then when I submit that, it's going to create a quote in the system and then allow me to configure this quote further. So I can click the configure button here. And now I'm launching the ExperLogix product. Now, when I do that, um, I've got two choices here and I'll just talk through this. Um, we'll head down one path, but um, ExperLogix can either be used to customize or change options from kind of a base configuration. So you might have, you know, standard configurations that you can modify for a customer, or we have what we call a guided selling approach where a series of questions would help you narrow down um, the recommended choices for a customer. So uh, based on maybe where you're going to be using the truck, what kind of, um, is it long distance or short distance hauling? What kind of um, loads are you going to be carrying? We might recommend different products, different engines, different trailers, et cetera, for that. So that's kind of the guided selling approach. Um, today, we'll just go down the configure my truck approach where we've got some base configurations, different models. We're going to configure the 5000 model. And when I do that, it comes up with some defaults uh, of that model. Um, and from there, we can change and modify that. So just to give you a little feel for our uh, UI in this, our user interface, um, we've got different categories along the left here. So I can either scroll down to different sections, you know, transmissions, batteries, air compressors, or I can jump to those, you know, through this type of uh, menuing system on the left. So it helps me to jump around if I've got a lot of different categories that I want to attend to in my uh, in my quote. I can also have access to different brochures, um, different marketing materials that might assist in the process 
of choosing a truck. Um, here I've got a few of the um, guided selling type questions in here. So maybe, um, you know, I tell the, the sales rep that fuel economy is really important to me. Um, here it comes with a suggested then selection that maybe we should get the, uh, the rear tires, get a different, uh, different tire scenario for better fuel economy. So we'll say, yeah, we'll do that. Um, so it added that automatically based on that upsell message. Uh, maybe we wanna select a different engine for our truck. And so we're gonna uh, go down here and select an engine and we want it to have you know, a certain level of peak torque to meet the demanding needs that we have out there on the highways. So let's say uh, we want it greater than 1800 torque. And you see here, I can filter then my results because I've got a lot of different engine choices. So I only want to see those greater than 1800. Um, I could choose, you know, also uh, less than a certain price. I can have multiple filters up here that will allow me to, uh, to filter down my selection. So here's all of my engines that are over 1800 in peak torque. I will go ahead and select one. Here's one 1850 for another $6,000. That's not so bad. We'll take that on. But now it's telling me uh, that the peak torque of that engine is too high for the transmission that I had selected. So um, as you can see now in the transmission area, it's all red. I'm gonna have to fix this. I'm gonna have to select a different transmission to allow me. As you can see, the one I had selected previously, the limit was 1650. Um, it is only showing me the items that um, are compatible. So this is where those rules come into play so that I'm only selecting options that I can actually build. And so I can select them from one of these choices and add um, a transmission that provides, you know, that, that's compatible to the truck I'm trying to build. So you see that message went away. So I've got my transmission. Uh, let's say the, the trucker wants to add a sleeper. Again, another upsell message suggesting that we get, uh, get a bunk and refrigerator to go with that. That sounds great, so we'll add those two. Um, and we'll, we'll say from the rest of this, let's leave it as is. Oh, that's right, we were gonna change the, the color to blue. Um, so you can see we've got some interactive visualizations here where we can change the, the color. Uh, let's say everything else is good, but uh, boy, when we change that transmission and stuff, we get up to a pretty high uh, list price. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a discount for this. And so in this scenario, um, I might have authority to do a 10% discount. Uh, it still says that's a go, it does not require approval. Uh, but let's see how far we can push it. How about a 40% discount? And, and well, we're gonna have to get some approval there. Um, so, so with this, you can have a, a workflow then fired in the, the back end of the solution in the dynamics application. Um, asking approval of a, man, uh, a manager. And we'll say it was a, that transmission option that really put us over what we wanted to be able to sell this for. Um, as you can see at the bottom, I can see the running tally of the list price, what my dealer cost is, uh, weight, what the commission would be as a dealer, et cetera. All of that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save and close this particular truck. As I do this, it's writing back um, to our dynamic system and will make that available to me through the portal, but also through my CRM and my ERP application. So we'll submit that and then let's go over to our, um, this case I've, I've got it coming into our CRM system. And let me refresh my dashboard here. Once I do that, you'll see my uh, the new portal quote showed up here. So now I'm an internal, let's say I'm an internal sales rep. And I see that, oh, one of my dealers um, is talking to Forest Wholesales and they have selected a quote for a new truck. I'm gonna wanna review that. Probably gonna have to go in and approve those discounts. Um, but I can see the different options they've got here. 
um, quick view will show me everything that they've selected. So I can see the different items and the pricing. Close that, oops. I can also see the bill materials that's being generated as part of this process. So um, in this case, I've got kind of a, a base model that doesn't have a lot of assembly required, but I'm adding the sleeper. I'm adding, uh, you know, cab assembly, and I've got a workstation here to paint the, the color blue. So not a real complex bill of materials in this scenario, but uh, the key here is that this is going to flow all the way through to production so that the quote is going to turn into an actual product in the end. Let's say the customer calls in and says, you know, I got that quote from a dealer, but can I get, um, get some comparative quotes out there? So we'll take that original one, we'll duplicate it. And let's go into the, to the second one then, and we'll edit it and make a couple quick changes for a good and better type scenario for the customer. So let's edit this one. And let's say for one, the customer decided against blue and they want to go green. So we're going to change that. And they wanted to add a few more items um, to the sleeper. So they want an upper bunk as well. And they want to upgrade the mattress to a little bit nicer, nicer, uh, comfortable mattress, let's say out there. And let's go ahead and save that. So just a couple changes. Once we do that, uh, we've got our two different configurations out here, two different prices, 202, 205 is this latest one. And if we want to compare, which a lot of customers will ask for that good, better, best, type scenario, we can see all of the different options that were selected. And if we want to just see, well, what were the differences? Um, you can see the, the few differences that we changed in the two uh, different scenarios. So the customer says, yeah, I like that green one better. Let's go ahead and delete the blue one. And we'll move forward with with that. So you see our line items here now are updated with the one we chose. Um, I'll go through the quick process of converting this to an order. And once we do the fulfillment, and your process might be simpler than this, but this is how we've got it set up. Uh, once we do the fulfillment of this, now the product is going to, uh, the configuration is going to move from our CRM system into our ERP system. And like I said before, um, I'm showing an operations system from Dynamics, but you know, your NAV systems will work uh, identical to this uh, from a process standpoint. So if I go look at the orders that we have out there, you'll see that this new truck order has, has popped into here. And so now I can go back in if I need to and uh, update the configuration. Maybe the customer calls at the very end and decides they want to change that color black back to blue, whatever it might be. I can see my bill of materials in here. I can then create my actual bombs and go through um, and create, you know, a production order and such through the process. So I, I won't go through all of that because it's all kind of internal to your ERP system and how you do your processes. But the key point is, is we started with a dealer, which you may or may not, you know, be going through. Um, we moved that into an internal sales organization to be able to make some modifications to the quote and then pass that information on to an ERP system for actual production. So um, those are kind of the key points of the product that I want to point out today. And as you saw through the process, I've got a lot of flexibility, a lot of uh, capabilities to make sure that I produce a quote fast, 
um, and accurately uh, for my customers. So with that, I will wrap up with the, um, oops, let's go to that last slide, sorry about that. I will wrap things up on my end. Um, here's my contact information. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out directly, or obviously better probably through, um, through the Anovia team and Angie. Um, so they can uh, help you through the, the evaluation process as well. If, if anyone does have questions, uh, like I said, you could, or Angie said, you could type those into the chat window. I don't see any there right now. Uh, so feel free, you know, in follow-up uh, to, to ask questions again through Angie or through myself. Angie, I'll turn it back to you. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. And thank you for everyone who have attended. Uh, we appreciate that. And just as a reminder, uh, I just want to let you know that um, this recording will be available on our website later this week for you to review again or to share with anyone who may be interested. Simply click on our past events page and select the webinar that you would like to watch. And we would also like to invite you to our next webinar. Uh, we've got three of them coming up next week, and they will be uh, on data cleanup with Rapid Start. Marlene is wrapping up her third part uh, series on data cleanup on populating data. And September 12th, we will have Kixis, and they will be presenting on maximizing your Dynamics Nav performance with SQL Perform tools. And then on the 13th, we will have our very own Steve Waltz. He will be doing a presentation on cracking the CRM code. So if you're interested in any of those events or any future events, um, please don't hesitate to get registered for those. And conference season is upon us. I just want to let you know that we will be at uh, Directions and Summit. Um, for Summit, we will be in booth 529, so we would love to meet you. Stop by our booth, and uh, we can certainly get to know you and your team that attend. All right, well, thank you again, everyone, and thank you, Brian, for the informative information that you presented on CPQ. We look forward to seeing everyone on one of our future webinars. Have a great day, and enjoy your weekend.